Hi, good afternoon. This is Valerie Milano with the Hollywood Times and also Aspiring Magazine. And I want to welcome our guest today in Los Angeles. And he is going to talk to us about him. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is TJ O'Grady Payton. Um, I'm an Irish director, and we're here to talk about my short film, Room Taken, which is long listed for next year's Academy Awards. So looking forward to chatting. Great, great. And congratulations on that, on that nomination that's listed for the Academy. Yeah, Room Taken is a beautiful story of uh, two strangers who form an unexpected connection. Uh, recently arrived asylum seeker, in Dublin, who, in a desperate need for a place to stay, finds an unexpected answer to his temporary homelessness when he takes refuge in the home of an elderly blind woman without her knowledge. As these two strangers coexist, a touching and, un and an unexpected bond forms between them. So I want to thank TJ for, for uh, this film and... Uh, this is an amazing story that takes on some important themes, including the challenges faced by asylum seekers, the rising homeless population in Ireland, and the growing epidemic of isolation and loneliness amongst the elderly. Michael Whelan's story has a ton of heart. Where do you connect with this story, and how did you come to direct this amazing short film? Uh, well, thank you for that intro. Um, so, yeah, like I am a director. I've made lots of short films over the years. I also make commercials and um, I directed a commercial a couple of years ago. And the one of the creatives on it was Michael Whelan, who uh, is a writer and he uh, has never written a, a screenplay for a film before. And after the commercial, we got chatting about projects and I was looking for something to bring to Screen Ireland, uh, who are the kind of the the state uh, television and film agency that fund all of the like productions um in in America it's often more like private businesses or people in in Ireland it's like taxpayers money and it's the state that funds it but um he had written a script and he sent it to me and uh, I read it and I remember like reading it and feeling super moved by the story um uh, which was surprising because like usually a short film which might be you know twelve pages in in duration for a script. Uh, it's hard to create emotion. But when I read it, I felt really moved. And I guess at the time, um, my father was unwell. He'd been having, he had a long uh, illness for many years and Michael had actually lost his brother a couple of years previous. So like the kind of, the, the element of grief in the story kind of resonated with me. And there's one scene in particular, which I read, I really felt moved by. And after that, I was like, totally convinced that this would be a great project and something that had a really unique concept. So um, I said, do you want to try and make it? And we went about trying to find funding and uh, we, we eventually got it. So it's been a crazy kind of journey. <laughs> well, certainly Room Taken addresses issues, but this is a character driven story and the main cast, Brid Brennan as Victoria and Gabriel Adewusi. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. 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 Um, he, he plays Isaac. They're brilliant. And how did the cast come together? So, yeah, the, the cast was like our, we had a casting director called Dawn McAllister. I had known Breed's work before. Breed's won like a Tony Award in the 90s for Dancing at Lunasa, which was turned into a movie with Meryl Streep, which she also was in. And she'd been nominated for like Olivier Awards. So in the theater world, she's been highly like recognized. So I was always a fan. And um Previous to that, uh, Breed knows we we did look at trying to find someone from the blind community, but it found very it proved to be very challenging. So um, for that role of Victoria, so when we couldn't find someone who was actually from the blind community, uh, we approached Breed, uh, and she you know graciously joined the team and had some spare time to kind of do a short because she obviously does a lot bigger productions, um, and then with Gabriel, uh, I was just looking at self tapes and. Um, you know, we kind of kept the brief, you know, uh, casting brief somewhat open to see what kind of characters and actors came back to us because we were open to changing the script and workshopping it to kind of evolve. But he had sent in a tape and immediately I just thought he had this kind of empathetic gaze. His eyes were super kind of like kind and he had this sort of gentle kind of uh, 
I don't want to say giant, but he's quite a big, strong guy. But he had this gentle kind of uh, manner. And I felt like he would be a likable character. And for someone who does something quite wrong morally in the story, sneaking into someone's house, effectively breaking in, you kind of have to still root for them. And I felt like he was someone you could root for because he was a likable guy. Uh, getting back to Breed, her portrayal of the blind woman was so good. One might believe Breed was in fact blind. But you had a visual impairment consultant on this film. How did yeah. that work? Was this an ongoing process of the consultant working daily with Breed? Or was there a period of preparation prior to filming and she took it home from there? Yeah, it was the latter. So like, obviously, in short films, your resources uh, are limited. So um, one of the kind of actors or actresses that we really liked um but didn't feel, you know, she was 100% right for the part. We asked if she'd like to come on board as a consultant. And she was a blind woman called Dolores Cullen. And uh, she was a real, she is a real character. She's like, you know, from inner city Dublin. And, you know, I think she was a cleaning lady before she became blind. And then like she, 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 she had an illness where she lost her sight over the course of 10 years, but she still had this really kind of, you know, uh, positive sort of like uh, fun kind of personality. And, um, when she came on board, we just wanted to kind of introduce Breed to her so she could kind of maybe ask questions or get to know her. So so we literally we did a rehearsal day with Breed and then we went and met Dolores for a cup of tea in like this, you know, nice hotel. And we just hung out, you know what I mean, and kind of let them get to know each other. And I think she kind of learned a lot just from that one interaction. I had worked with Dolores a good bit beforehand and like, you know. Uh, been in her house and we'd kind of like worked on scenes and spoken about you know the believability and how to the, the house would look and what kind of features it would have but um yeah her and Breed just basically hung out and that really kind of gave Breed a lot of I suppose um insight into the community and and what it was like and that really kind of changed her kind of approach and and made it more authentic. There were considerable challenges for the director of photography Evan Barry, right? Evan Barry, yeah. Um, some challenges shooting in a darkened house. Can you talk about the cinematography? Yeah, so the cinematography, you know, like you don't obviously, if you're like, there's a range of like, being on a spectrum in terms of being blind, like you can be 100% blind, but some people have some kind of sight, like might be 80%. But um usually you wouldn't be turning on your lights, you know, especially if you were 100% blind. So everything had to be either natural light as if it was through a window from the sunlight or if it was nighttime from a street light. So we kind of like gave ourselves these rules where, you know, you had to kind of make it feel like the light was coming from a source from the window. So so a street light outside in a Dublin city, you know, um, kind of uh, estate was was our night nighttime look and then daylight was our daytime look. But we tried to keep it very kind of classical and composed. You know, we wanted it to feel atmospheric, but for the most part, it was a very kind of controlled aesthetic and uh, just wanted it to feel very cinematic. We shot in uh, anamorphic lenses and uh, uh, yeah, tried to keep it a classy sort of feel. I guess two films that we looked at in terms of tone that we thought were interesting was a film called The Farewell, which was very controlled, almost locked off camera frames and amazing casting. And then uh, Parasites, which is just like beautiful kind of tracking shots and very cinematic. And those two films kind of were in the back of our mind when we were kind of trying to come up with a, 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 a tone and visual style. Thank you. Yeah, and the musical score by Jamal Green was perfect, eliciting tension, suspense, frustration, confusion, joy, all the right feelings at, at all the right moments. Uh, tell me about the music and how it was used to accent the characters' emotions and circumstances. Yeah, we were thinking about like what was the best way to use music and and we experimented in the edit um with temp tracks to kind of see tonally which felt, you know, uh, right for the scene. But Jamal came in and totally just exceeded our expectations. He's BAFTA recognized in the UK. He's based in London 
And uh, yeah, I guess we were just trying to amplify the emotion of whatever the scene was. So if something was suspenseful, we wanted to draw it out with suspense music. If it was a little bit quirky and lighthearted, like the 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 montage when he fixes the radio, we wanted that to feel a little bit fun and positive and light. So so whatever the kind of, uh, I suppose, feeling of the scene was, the tone was just trying to heighten that, you know, tension or or fun or conflict, whatever it was. Wonderful. So tell us, how can our viewers and our readers be able to find out more the, about the film and you and... Yeah, so we have like our Instagram page, which is very active, and there's some interesting news going to be shared over the next while that we're excited about. That's Room Taken. Uh, if you if you go on Instagram, and uh, my website's tjogradypayton.com. Um, we are definitely uh, releasing some stuff as time goes on. There's more festivals to to be announced. Uh, we're also hoping to release the film online for for a limited period of time before the vote. So if you keep tuned into our socials, you'll see when that might be. But uh, yeah, and then down the line, I, I'm sure we'll be trying to get it to various platforms. But um, yeah, that's that's a, another conversation. <laughs> Do you have anything next in the works at all? I've got about four feature scripts that are in my back pocket that I'm working on. Um, it all depends on how this goes. If this goes well, <laughs> maybe the more ambitious one might be might be uh, moving forward. But, uh, you know, I'm talking about the Oscar campaign. But yeah. Um, uh, time will tell. There's there's a couple that are very low budget, and then there's a couple that are big budget. So, um, I guess next year I'll have a better idea of which one it might be. <laughs> I'll be focusing on. Yeah, TJ, will you keep us posted? We're the Hollywood Times dot today, and the Hollywood Times official is our YouTube channel. And it's a pleasure to meet you virtually. Maybe we'll meet in person someday. Yeah, like that's one of these great. festivals. That'd be great. Definitely. Thank Thanks you again. so much for your time. Bye. Thank okay. you. Bye. -bye.